Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Never Alone Homestead. My name is Cammie, and welcome back to my kitchen. Well, guys, we're talking about self-reliance, being more self-reliant. So I have took some carrots out of my raised bed, decided to go ahead and harvest them out. I've been eating carrots all winter long, canning them, eating them fresh. It's been a wonderful, wonderful treat. There's nothing like homegrown, fresh anything, vegetables, whatever you got homegrown. So I took the carrots out of my, my garden, and this is the thing, guys. When you got fresh carrots and you're canning, you fill up your pantry. They're a good treat. They're good for soups. They're good for stews. Just a, They're already cooked, and you just take them out and go ahead and have them as a side dish. So they are a wonderful, wonderful treat. So I took these carrots that I took out of my raised bed, and I for being fresh carrots, all I did was wash them off and take a vegetable brush and, and, and scrub them off while I'm washing the dirt off. Sometimes I will wash them two times to get into the little grooves of the carrots that's there and make sure I get all the dirt out. Now, if I was doing store-bought carrots, what I would do is peel the skins off of those carrots because one thing is for sure is that they use different types of chemicals and you don't know what they're using. So a good uh, advice would be whether it's potatoes or whatever, it's just try to peel your vegetable off. So, you know, you, you want to peel that skin off. But these fresh carrots here, all I had to do was wash them and scrub them a little bit. I sliced them up. I took and put them into the jar. Uh, you can use quartz. You can use pints. I found out that pints are really great. They're a great size. They're perfect even uh, for putting in soups and stews. Just eating as a side dish, as I said. But I put, sliced my carrots up, I put them in my jars, and then I put one half teaspoon of canned salt into my jars. If it's a quart, a teaspoon of canned salt into my jars. Then, since I did these raw packing, I would just take hot water that I already had on the stove, and I would pour it over these carrots. Now, if you're hot packing, what you would do is put them in a pot, put them on the stove, and you will blanch them for five minutes. Then you put them in your jars and with the liquid, put the li hot liquid in there. And then the next step, whether it's raw packing or hot packing, then I always, with no matter what I'm canning, I take some vinegar, I put it on my paper towel, you can use a rag, then I wipe the tops of my jars. And let me say this, I wipe the tops of my jars, but the reason of that is to get off any salt or any kind of grease or anything like that. The reason I put this deep bubbler here so I wouldn't forget. Now... With carrots, it's kind of, especially if they're really packed, it's really hard to get the air bubbles out. But you're going to try to get, you know, move your, your debubbler down in there and try to get some air out. And uh, then that's when I take my vinegar and my paper towel and I wipe the top. So it's pretty basic. It's pretty simple. And then I just put my lid on. I finger tight it. You tighten it. You don't want to go too tight. You don't go like this. You just, you just want to finger tight finger tight. And then you're going to have your canner all already over here. Now, if you're raw packing, you want the water uh, in your canner about the same temperature as that's what's into the jar because you don't want your jars to shatter. Uh, if you're hot packing, then you don't have to worry about it. You, uh, you just, you know, put it, go ahead and put it in your canner. So once I got these jars filled up, as I'm raw packing, uh, make sure my temperature or my water is close enough to the temperatures in this jar, and I just put them in the jar. Um, then I'm going to put my lid, my canner lid on, and this is the thing. Then you're going to turn your pressure, I mean, turn your temperature up to high because you want this vent to start venting out, and you'll see steam rolling out, and you're going to set your timer. Once that steam starts rolling out, and you're going to set it for 10 minutes. You want your pressure canner to vent for at least 10 minutes. Then once the venting has, the timer has gone off, and once the venting has taken place, then you're going to put your weight on. Now, this is a Presto pressure canner. I have an all-American pressure canner. I had two of them, and so they take a different weight. Now, before you really start canning, you need to find out what your PSI is, or what your pressure is going to be for your area. Well, my area is going to be 10 pounds of pressure. For 10 pounds of pressure, and uh, even onto my All American canner, is still 10 pounds of pressure. And you can find out that information 
on the internet. You can also look into your manual of your pressure uh, canner. It should have it in there. Then once uh, once that once that once you put your weight on there, you steamed it, uh, bended it, and you put your weight on there. What you're doing now, you're going to stand very closely to your canner, and you're going to watch this pressure go up. And for my area, 10 pounds of pressure. Once it reaches to your area of pressure, then you're going to cut that temperature down from high. And you got to know your stove. For my stove, uh, it depends on how many jars I have in there. Since I only had, at this time, five jars in there, then I turn my stove pressure or my stove uh, temperature down to two. And that's why you have to watch your stove to see what your pressure is doing because you don't want it to fall below the 10 pounds or whatever your PSI is. You don't want it to fall below because then you kind of got to, you know, you make sure it stays stable because that's your canning pressure that you want to can your jars. So once that, once that PSI reaches up there, I set my timer. For quartz, it takes 30 minutes and for pints, for 25 minutes. It's really simple and basic information. Uh, once your timer goes off, for say, for example, for these pints, then once my temperature, uh, my uh, timer goes off, <laughs> once my timer goes off for 25 minutes, then I'm going to uh, cut my stove off and I'm going to wait for this temperature gauge here to roll back down to zero. When it rolls down to zero, you will hear this valve right here. You'll hear this plop. You'll hear it plop down. Uh, a good rule of thumb also is maybe wait three to five minutes to make sure all the pressure's down into the, the pressure canner. But when you hear this, usually it's down. The next step is once that is down, and sometimes I do wait uh, a few minutes, uh, and if you have to wait a few minutes, it's not going to hurt anything. But you always want to make sure that you lift this this way. You don't want to stand close to it either. You want to stand, you know, I always stand back a little bit. And let that steam, if there's any steam in there, roll out in the heat. Because if you do it this way, you're going to burn your face. Well, guys, that's pretty much it. Self-reliance, preserving carrots for the future. A simple, easy, easy recipe. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. And remember to make it a great day. It's a motto that I have. It's something I live by. We all go through trials and tribulations and situations and things happen, you know, you just, things will make you cry, things will make you smile, things just happen. So we have to learn to find the positivity and to make it a great day. Canning makes me happy, so I am making it a great day. Guys, hit that uh, bell so you'll know when I'm uh, loading up a video, uh, subscribe. And give me a thumbs up. If you don't give me a thumbs up. It kind of keeps me in this category. Nobody sees the videos because YouTube don't really put them out there until you got a, a certain amount of people watching your videos. And hey, I do believe that whoever needs to see these videos will see these videos. But anyways, thank you so much. Thank you for all my subscribers. I appreciate you so much. I was actually looking at uh, people who's watched my videos or, you know, how many people watch my videos. And I was like, wow, you know, because one time you have the zero and, and then you look and you got 51. Well, that don't sound like a lot, but me, it just makes my heart sing. So I just want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you that you would take the time. Remember to make it a great day. God bless you and have a wonderful day.